The direct measure of strain is essentially different from other methods of strain sensing, such as the electrical resistance strain gauge, which requires an electrical analogy. Optical systems often require the interpretation of interference fringes. The direct measure of strain depends only on the definition of engineering strain. This will thus be explained in this short tutorial video. The direct measure of strain depends on three separate gauge configurations, a square gauge, a circular gauge, and a linear gauge. In all three configurations, the definitions of engineering strain are applicable and will be explained in detail. Each gauge configuration is defined by nodal points, as observed by the red dots in each one of the figures. The square gauge is identified by the nodal points on the corners of its inner and outer boundaries. The circular gauge is identified by nodal coordinates around the circumference of the inner and outer boundaries. And the linear gauge is identified by nodal coordinates, which are the midpoint of the horizontal bars as can be seen in this figure. The definition of engineering strain is defined by the change in length of a small line segment. Begin with the line with endpoints P and Q. The line is then stretched to have final endpoints P prime and Q prime. This change in length of a small line segment measured against itself is defined as the engineering strain. As was observed in the previous slide, endpoints are denoted by the red dots and it is the straight line segment change that identifies the strain. This is the reason this method is called the direct measure of strain. If the strain within the sensing area of the gauge is considered to be uniform, then the results are considered to be that of a 90 degree strain rosette, of which the two orthogonal linear strains are measured, as well as the associated shear strain. So one can think of uniform strain fields as a direct application of a 90 degree strain rosette, from which the principal strains can be easily calculated. On the other hand, if the strains are not considered to be uniform within the measuring area of the gauge, then the gauge can be treated as individual strain elements. Four on the inner boundary and four on the outer boundary provides eight independent measures of strain within the area of the gauge. This is particularly important in those problems associated with anomalies present in the area of measurement, such as a moving crack. The circular gauge measures circular arc segments around the 36 equally spaced circumferential arcs on the inner and outer boundary of the gauge as can be observed on this slide. Each gauge segment located within the equally spaced arcs can be measured as its local arc length delta s, and when the gauge is deformed, the arc length is moved to a new position as denoted by delta s prime. Therefore, Tangential strain around this local circular arc is the ratio of the length change over the original arc length distance. This measures 36 values of circumferential strain around the inner and outer boundary of the circular gauge. The linear gauge is made up of three columns of nodal points as can be seen in the figure. Each row of three points define an element E, much in the same way that elements are defined in finite element analysis. Over each element E, the assumption is that the displacement field can be defined by a quadratic function, and the strain over each element is calculated to be a linear function. The element defined in this slide identifies the quadratic approximated displacement functions and the associated linear strains for each element. I will not go into the details. However, the interested reader will find this very familiar reading compared to the finite element formulation for linear elements. The linear approximation is shown graphically in this figure, and in the linear approximation one can see that strain variations across the length of the gauge can be measured. This makes the linear gauge very suitable for the measure of local crack opening or the effect of other anomalies in the region of the gauge. If additional information is needed beyond this tutorial video, please contact sales at directmeasure.com and we will have one of our engineers be glad to provide additional details as requested.